So today is a big day in American soccer because not only today is the day where the U.S. Open Cup Final will be played between Orlando City versus Sacramento Republic, but this might be the most anticipated U.S. Open Cup Final we had had for a very, very long time. If not ever since MLS, of course, was found in 1996 and was entered in this competition because this is only the third time in the U.S. Open Cup history that an MLS team faced against a lower division in the first time since 2008 since DC United versus Charleston Battery and what's kind of unfortunate about this matchup is the fact that I don't think there's been enough hype in terms of how big this game is and that really the biggest news coming out of this is kind of negative because you know yesterday uh, as much as I kind of don't want to talk, talk about it and I want to ignore it before I do this video I have to kind of talk about the the cheating scandal that was going on in the spy gate that is going on with orlando city how there was a report from taylor 12 men that it seems like one of their their staff member decided to go to a public park and basically spy on the sacramento republic training session now obviously i don't know if u.s open cup cup or not u.s open cup but u.s soccer federation is going to do anything about that i mean you know if they're going to do anything they might hand out a fine i don't think they're going to force orlando city to forfeit again because we're getting to a point where it's too late for, for to it forfeit i mean with the, the anticipation in this game it will not be a good look for the u.s soccer federation to decide to cancel the u.s open cup final especially you know the u.s open cup it's been been canceled for the past two years and this is the first final that we have had since pre-pandemic so yeah i mean it, it's it's a game that i'm pretty sure they're not going to cancel it and that again they'll probably do some investigation and that the best i think they could they might do is maybe hand out a five to orlando city so you know as much as i know a lot of people say well is that that kind of spy gate that orlando city ba basically did is going to affect this game uh probably not but in terms of talk about this game itself and in this video mostly i'm going to talk about the road to final for both of these teams because you know both of these teams you know not only are coming into this game play, playing for their well actually in sacramento cases they have already won a trophy and people forgot that they won the usl championship all the way back i believe 2013 or 2012 but really this is the 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 first time that you know you know for orlando city they're chasing for their first ever trophy and for sacramento you know they're chasing for a trophy that no team has ever ever done in the lower league side since rochester rhino did it all the way back in 1999 so let's talk about Orlando City row to the final first. And what's interesting about all their games so far, it's that it's most of the game, if not all of the game that they play in the U.S. Open Cup has been at home. And, you know, playing at home in the U.S. Open Cup, it has been, been deemed that there's been times where the home team has always tends to have that home cooking in the U.S. Open Cup. And they do do much better. And it kind of is the case for Orlando City playing all their game at home and are probably got the luck of the draw in terms of getting all of their u.s open cup game at home and it will be the case for this final now in their first ever game in the u.s open cup in the third round because remember you know mls team enter in the u.s open cup a little bit earlier and a, a big part of that is to try to get these more more of these mls versus lower league cut kind of matchup and also see some big upset because we definitely saw some big upset that happened in the third round of the u.s open cup and also in the fourth round but this was not one of them as orlando city was able to win 2-1 against tampa bay rowdies and keep in mind tampa bay rowdies is one of the best team in the usl championship like i think as of now they're still second in the usl championship so this was not going to be an easy game for orlando city but they were able to pull out a 2-1 win and likewise in the next game where they play against the philadelphia union and granted i think if i remember the union didn't really play their their strongest team in this one but it's still the philadelphia union i mean this team is right right now now the most hottest and the best team in the league so the fact that they were able to take them them down and win 2-1 against the union that is certainly impressive even though maybe some might not say because of the fact that they were playing against a union team that it seems like Jim Curran didn't really care about the, this comp competition that bit. Now, in the next game, in the round of 16, we had the Florida Derby between Orlando City versus Inter Miami. Now, this, of course, did go all the way to a PK shootout. And that, of course, was also the case in the quarterfinal, which I'll get to. But in the, this game, you know, it was a nil-nil for a very long time. I think Miami actually took the lead in this game. And then Orlando was able to get one back in extra time. 
and ultimately Orlando wins in a PK shootout and continue their 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 slight dominance over their 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 southern na neighbor in the interstate rivalry that is the Florida Derby and winning 4-2 in a PK shootout. Now, as I met, mentioned, you know, in the next round where they play against Asheville SC, they also had to go all the way to a PK shootout. But I would say that this was probably the closest that Orlando City come from from getting eliminated. In fact. They actually came within a couple of minutes of getting eliminated in this game because Nashville, you know, they took the, the lead in this game and they kind of hold on for a very long time, even into stoppage time. It looked like Nashville was going to create the upset. They were, well, actually not, I wouldn't say it was the upset because coming into this game, you could say that Nashville was ki kind of the, the better side because of the form that they were in. Whereas Orlando City, you know, this was doing a time when they were kind of not being a little bit inconsistent than, um, in league plays and that again knowing the fact that nashville is a very good row row team everybody the would, would not be surprised that nashville would will pull up the upset and again they came very close on it they came within a couple of minutes of stoppage time but orlando city score in stoppage time and then we go all the way to a pk shootout which in the end orlando was able to prevail and win 6-5 in a pk shootout now in the semi-final against the new york red bulls again this is another game where i think orlando city wasn't really the the favorites coming coming into this game at home because we know the Red Bulls are a very good team on on the road and this is also during the time when Orlando City was being inconsistent and getting to a point where they basically were, were went on a bit of a, a free fall. But not only the fact that Orlando City put in in the best performance in the U.S. Open Cup, but I argue that was probably the best performance that that Orlando City has put in all season long. A 5-1 thrashing that they had against the New York Red Bulls. Though, again, this game was kind of close, at least for the first half. I mean, it was 1-1 heading into halftime. And keep in mind, I think the Red Bulls got the lead in that one, only for Orlando City to score five on answer. And really, uh, Orlando kind of ran away with this one. Like, the floodgates basically opened in the second half, and they basically scored, like, three goals in quick succession to really make the, the score line not as close as the game itself. But when you look at the game, you know, at least for the first half and part of the second half, it was a lot closer than the 5-1 demolition that Orlando City has against the New York Red Bulls. And I would also say, I think that's one of the biggest scoreline for a semifinal in the U.S. Open Cup. Because, you know, up to this point, there's a lot at stake. You don't usually see, like, a lot of blowout. And, you know, even though it, it is going to be deemed as a blowout, when you, of course, watch the game, it was a little bit closer than what the 5-1 scoreline basically suggested. But... That being said, uh, now looking at, at the, the underdog, and, you know, everybody has t tailored this as the David versus Goliath kind of matchup, and that, you know, Orlando City are pre pretty much uh, the Goliath, and Sacramento is pretty much the David, or what was it the other way around? I never understand that, that reference too, too, too much. But, obviously, the easy way to say this is that Sacramento is definitely the, the underdog underdog coming into this game because you know they, they did something that pretty much only three other uh usl L team had has done since mls came into this competition and was formed back in 1996 reaching the u.s open cup final now their adventure to the final all started in the second round which they won six nothing against portland timbers u23 now this was kind of a matchup that i think out of pretty much most of this matchup they were heavy favorites in i mean you know portland timbers u23 i think they were um they were i think an mpsl team at any time when you have a usl championship versus an mpsl team you know the usl championship team is going to be favorites and likewise sacramento just smacked portland timbers u23 in fact they i think they scored six goals in the first half in that match yeah they scored six goals in, in that game it was pretty much men's against boys and that the republic easily move on into the third round now, in the third round, they play against Central Valley Fuego FC. Now, what's interesting about this game is that even though Central Valley Fuegos were in the USL League 1 and Sacramento are kind of still the favorites because, you know, when you have a second tier versus third tier team, you would say that the second tier team team is favorites. But remember, Central Valley Fuego, they already caused an, an up, upset uh, earlier in, in the second round. So many people thought that this could be an up, upset too. And for a while, they kind of hanged up with Sacramento except for the Republic getting a late late stoppage time winner to move on to the next round, into the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup. Now, in the fourth round, they had an all-USL championship matchup against Phoenix Rising, and although I know this season Phoenix Rising hasn't been do doing very well this season, which is very uncharacteristic because they've always been the dominant force in the Western Conference in the USL championship, 
they actually should, should um at that point they people were saying that maybe this could be be a good matchup between two very good USL championship team. Well, Sacramento based, they just kind of have a laugh there and basically easily dispatch them by winning 2 0 against the Phoenix Rising. And this is where we begin the miracle run for Sacramento. This is where when they started to now kind of consider the the underdog and that this is where, where the story really begin for the this team. Because in the round of 16, and this is by the way also where I, I did attend a couple uh, of these games starting in this one between Sacramento versus the San Jose Earthquakes. Now, I also will say that as much as I know some people would say that this, this was a game where the Republic could be an underdog against the Quakes. Quakes were not do were, were not doing well that season, and yes, yes, they were kind of on on a bit bit of an upswing. But this would have been a popular upset pick because you know one thing if you don't know about Sacramento and that you know I've seen this before for many times whenever they get into this competition, they have the knack of upsetting an MLS team. Like they they done it before. I think uh, one of the the more famous one that they did was against the Seattle Sounders, and I was at at. That game, and even though I know they didn't play the strongest Sounders team, it was definitely a, a big upset because this is the Seattle freaking Sounders we're talking about that they they upset. And then I, I remember a couple of years they also so upset at RSL, and that game wasn't even close. Like they absolutely destroyed Real Salt Lake four one in in that match, and that was back when RSL so uh, just like like now this season were a very decent team. So the fact that they absolutely demolished RSL like like that at home. That was something un unprecedented. So this is a team that they know they know how to upset against MLS team. So it shouldn't be a big surprise that they did upset the Quakes in this one by winning two nothing. And overall, it was just a perfect performance by by the Republic. Like they, you know, this was not a game where you know when you see a USL Championship versus MLS team, you would say that maybe the USL Championship got some lucky breaks and and, and able to score. No, uh, this was a game where I thought the Republic were the better team in in this one. They really outplay. The, the Quakes in, in this game, and they deserve, they got a 2 nothing win against the Quakes, and likewise, that was just kind of the same same situation in the next game, where they play uh, against the Galaxy, where, you know, it kind of helped the fact that they got an early lead in that one, and the, the shock was on, though I know some people might might also say, well, as soon as the Galaxy got the equalizer, maybe this is when the fairy tale story ends, and, you know, for Sacramento, as much as they have had some big upset in the U.S. Open Cup against MLS team, they have never really kind of done it con consistently. That all changes th this year with them them able to win two two one against the Galaxy and of course scoring a late goal to really kind of stun every everyone. Because again, you know when the Galaxy got the equalizer, everybody thought, well, this is it. This is when the Galaxy can can start to run away, and that didn't happen. Uh, the, the Republic was able to get a win, and especially. On the road too. Like we usually see USL Championship side. When they get a big up, upset. It's usually they happen at home. We don't usually see it, it happen on the road too. So this is one of the rare occasion. Where we actually see a, a USL Championship on the road. Pull off a big big upset. Against an MLS team. And like the Ga Galaxy. Which you know. I know the Galaxy didn't really start the, the strong strongest team. But again. You know. It is still a, a decent and team and that again the Republic pulled a big upset and this is where we started to be in top out history because is Sacramento you know they're now now into a category where this is the first team to reach to the semifinal of the US Open Cup since FC Cincinnati did it back in 2018 but you're thinking again Sporting KC and again I know Sporting KC was not doing doing well well that this season but they started to kind of have an upswing heading into this game against the Republic and especially with the way that for Sporting KC for 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 a long time coming into this game they pretty much put all their eggs in one basket off this competition like if there's ever, any MOS team that has focused the most out of this competition it's got to be Sporting KC so you know that this was not just going to be a game where Peter Vermees was just going to put a B team and that he's going to try to put his his strongest team in this against Sacramento Republic and okay also this was another game I was there and I gotta say that was probably one of, of the most enjoyable and a, a, one, one of the game that I will ne never forget because you know it's not just the history that I saw but that place at, at, at Heart Health Park in Sacramento it was packed to the rifter you can see the exci excitement it like for a semi-final game that game might as well be be, be a, a US Open Cup Cup final itself because the buzz around the stadium was absolutely un 
unreal and you just kind of had had a sense that you know something special was going to happen that night something special showing that that maybe sacramento is going to do do the improbable and they did and that pk shootout i will never forget it i mean the malik foster their moment will definitely go go on as one one of the great great this story and one of the most iconic moment in u.s open cup cup history because only the, it's not just the penanka that that was was such a such a such an iconic moment but the celebration the 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 flip to to troll william agata after he decided to do a, a a flip and and trying to troll him because of it but also doing the night nighty night i mean that is going to be something that is probably going to go down as one of the most iconic moments in u.s open cup and if i ever do a video talk about some of the most iconic moments of the u.s open cup i would say malik foster penalty will be right up there because that you you just simply cannot write write that as such a big moment in that game and i think that was also kind of a moment when i thought that yeah sacramento is gonna do it they're going to upset sporting kc which they did by winning 5-4 in that one and again you know, it just feels like like the stars are aligned with this Republic team. I mean, I know, no offense to Orlando City, and I know they're starting to get themselves in the right foot, but just, there's just something tells me that the star has a, a line to this Sacramento Republic team, and especially with all the heartbreaks that this team has dealt with, and that I, I mentioned many times in the Sports Hop series, it feels like this run isn't just for, for them to make an incredible run, but also a run that is clearly for retribution for what happened been years and year of them potentially going to MLS and it was ne neglect neglected either because because the Don Gabber decided to to pull a fast one on them or the fact that their owner themselves decided to pull, pull a fast one on them and that again it would be a perfect revenge and perfect retribution story that they would, of course would win win this competition and I hope so so too because you know I mean again no offense to Orlando City and I know no know that that orlando city themselves they also have it have a great story and they're trying to get their first ever silverware in their franchise history but i'm pretty sure the whole country is waiting rooting for sacramento in this one like you know everybody loves an underdog story and this is probably one of one of the best one we'll, we'll ever see in american soccer and that yeah i'm very excited to see how tonight's game is go going to be and and you know you know hopefully we're going to to get get something magical that is going to happen. Hopefully something historic is going to happen. Which is why after when this game is, is over. I'm going to be immediately doing a review of this game. And even though I know I'm going to be going to, to the dentist a little bit later. I, I didn't even mention the fact that I'm going to the dentist later to do a procedure. This is a game simply I can't not wait to do do a review. So I might sound a little bit bit kind of kind of wonky because of, of, me, uh, of me going to a dentist procedure. But you know. It, it, it's gonna something tells me something magical could happen in, in this game and that yeah i this is probably the most pumped i i am in a u.s open cup in a very very long time and i think everybody should should be because you know this is something that that we we might not not see for a very long time it is something that 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 you know we didn't think it was ever going to happen where especially at this this day day of age uh with the stride that mls has has made we don't. We didn't think that we would ever see a day where they would be be playing against a lower division team uh, in the U.S. Open Cup final. But there you have it. That is pretty much it for this video. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of this video and also your prediction. Who is going to win this one? I mean, I, if I had to make my prediction, I'm gonna go with Sacramento because I think the destiny is with them. I think they're going to 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 pull off the upset and and go down in history along with the 1999 Rochester Rhino team. As the, as the only the USL championship side or the only lower division side to upset an MLS team. But let me know in the comments below. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you do, make sure you guys see a like, smash the subscribe button. And yeah, I of course will see you guys next time.